Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is a beautiful Kentucky summer day here in central Kentucky. It's about 85 degrees outside and the temperature is climbing. We don't have a lot of cloud cover. Uh, today's pretty wide open and sunny. Uh, we've had a lot of rain recently, but a lot of that rain has moved out. So today looks to be the forecast is just bright and sunny and hot. And that is a perfect day to melt your wax cappings or render your wax. And there's lots of different ways we'll talk about on how you can render your wax. But what I, what I currently use is the Lysen Solar Wax Melter. So this is a product Lysen makes and obviously it doesn't use any electricity or any heating. You may see some uh, that use a crock pot to render their wax and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But this just uses the, the sun's rays. It's, a, it's made out of plastic tub on the bottom. It's got this layer of glass on top. And then I'll bring you in here in just a minute and I'll show you the insides of it. But it's a really efficient and effective and cost effective way to melt your beeswax. And, and I have a lot of beeswax now because I've already done my first round of extractions. So all those beautiful wax cappings that you scrape off when you harvest your honey, you want to save those and set those aside. And that's what I've done. I have this little tub that I keep my wax cappings in whenever I'm done extracting. And so I just put them all inside here. And if you watch my previous video, you see where I use that new wax press that I have to try to get as much of the honey out of here as possible. And so this wax is absolutely ready to be melted. And typically I wait for these hot summer days to do this. Since you're using a solar melter, it needs to be, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly sunny outside, but the hotter and the sunnier it is, obviously, the better that this is going to work. So I'll go ahead and bring you in here and show you exactly what this looks like from a detailed perspective. Okay, so like I said, it's made out of plastic all the way around here, made by Lyson. Pretty decent size. And then this is, this is uh, aluminum, I believe, metal, and then glass here. And so if you take the top off, you can see inside here that there's an aluminum metal tray. And then it has this sort of grate that functions as a filtering mechanism for the, for the, for the cappings. So when they get, when the wax gets melted by the sun and starts to drip down here, anything else that may be in those wax cappings is going to get filtered through here. Now, in my opinion, these holes are not nearly small enough, but you don't want super fine holes because then it would make cleanup really difficult and they would get plugged up really easy. And I'll explain that more here in a minute. So each, each of these Lysen wax melters comes with two of these metal pans. And this is what the wax drips into as it melts and it'll slowly fill up over time. And then when it cools down, you're left with a really nice, thick, long, clean wax bar that is ready to be further melted down to make candles or use it for, or put it in a, a mold or whatever it is that your preference uh, that, you, that you do with your wax bars. Now, a trick that I've found for this that I think works great is just using regular paper towels as a further filtering media. Think of it almost like a, like a cheap man's cheesecloth. And I just take two paper towels back to back and fold it over twice so that it's really four four layers thick and then I just set it set it with the, the the fold down towards the bottom and just push it up against that it's already pretty hot in here push it up against that grate there and then take a second one and do the exact same thing so just make sure that it covers it end to end and that it goes all the way down to the bottom because that wax is going to start right here and it's going to soak all the way through these paper towels and then over time it's going to drip through here and collect down in this pan and it works great so once you get your paper towels in there i'm gonna go ahead and show you the put it back on the on the stand here and i'll show you what i do with these wax cappings Get your container of wax here. I'm gonna push this forward a little bit. And 
and it's as easy as it looks. You just start to slowly fill this up with your cappings. You wanna spread it pretty evenly around. On the tray. You don't have to stuff it. You don't have to fill it completely full, but I would you could fill it, definitely fill it up to this, this tray line there. And it's literally this easy. Now there's still some residual honey in here, but that's okay. The honey, if I remember correctly, is heavier than the wax or lighter than the wax. So it'll form on the surface and the wax will collect at the bottom. I may have that backwards. We'll find out soon enough. But see, there's still quite a bit of honey that just naturally keeps draining out of this. But that's okay. It'll all get separated. Now, some people use a crock pot, which obviously is much more, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Not really consistent, but I guess regulates the, the melting uh, more evenly. Whereas obviously, when the sun is shining on this, it's melting. When it's not, it may not be melting as well or efficiently, and that's okay. But this requires zero electricity, which is nice. So you can do this if you're not close to an outlet or something of that nature. So, but the, uh, the crock pot's a great method too. There's lots of YouTube videos you can watch on how to, how to do that. I've personally not used that method. I've just gone with this uh, licensed solar wax melter, which I think works great. It takes more time for sure. There's already, look, there's already bees scoping this out, which, which happens. They smell that and they come running, especially during a dearth. Now here in Kentucky, we're still in somewhat of a flow which has been really nice. But this bee here is having a hard time resisting all this honey. So just a little bit more, then I'll call that good. All right. Grab my rag here. Stuff is messy, of course. I believe, so check as far as what this costs. I got this from betterbee.com, B-E-T-T-E-R-B-E-E.com. It retails now for about $215, I believe. It's gone up a little bit since I bought it. I want to say I got it for maybe $180 a couple years ago. But I still think it's worth that cost. It, it works really well. It's one of those kind of set it and forget it doesn't involve a lot of, you know, watching or hand holding, just putting the wax in there, set it, let it do its thing and you're done. So they do sell a stand. I just use a table that I have on this back patio. Works just as well for me, but they do offer an official stand if you wanted to get a stand with it. I think that stand retails for around $50. So for 250 bucks ish, 260 ish, you could get the whole setup with a stand. All right. So literally the only thing left to do is make sure that you have this centered and make sure that this drip pan obviously is pushed back and that the lip in here where the wax is going to start dripping, make sure obviously that it's going to make its way into the pan. See, it's like kind of a no brainer, but there's a pro tip for you. And then what I really like about the paper towel is it's cheap, it's effective, it's going to fill up with all this junk that's mixed in with these wax cappings. It's going to filter that out, and then you just grab the paper towel and throw it away. It's that easy. So put the lid back on. Now the sun's directly over top of us, so that's going to offer the uh, most optimum melting for this time of day. As the sun continues to move throughout the day, I will have to relocate and move this table if it ends up getting in the shade, or sometimes I'll transition the whole thing to the front of my house, which is where the sun really hits in the late afternoon, the four, the 5 p.m. And that's when that's when the, the day gets at its absolute hottest and this wax will melt very quickly. So, but yeah, that's it. You just literally put the wax cappings in there. It's a, a set it and forget it. Just obviously making sure that the sun is still hitting it. But other than that, 
it's really easy and, and effective. So I can already, oh, you know what? We need to save that. I can see that the bee is in there. So I, <laughs> I don't want to melt her. Watch out. That's the other thing. It does attract a few bees, but it's not bad. Um, but, you know, they can smell this a mile away, especially during a dearth. They would be all over this. But you may see a few bees buzzing around this, but it won't be too bad this time of year, especially with the with the lid on. It, it I've never seen it really be an issue. So let's let this melter do its thing and get to work, and we'll show you what the end product looks like. Okay, so here is your finished product. Uh, I went ahead and took this tray out, got it all cleaned up while it was hot, got everything out of it for the most part. There's still a little bit of residual wax in here, but you can take this bin after the wax has completely cooled down and you're left with this real nice, beautiful golden wax bar. And you can see where the bottom still has a little bit of crud on it, but I'll go ahead and render this again a second time, and that'll take care of all this remaining stuff. A lot of times with beeswax, you have to render it once or twice or three times, really more than once, quite honestly. So, you know, two, three, four times. And if you really want to get that nice golden pretty wax, so you just remelt it, and you can melt it in whatever, I, whatever you have, whether that be a crock pot, I would not use the solar melter necessarily for a, for a reheat or a remelt. I would just use a pot that you don't care about on top of a, of a burner, but you want to make sure that it's not direct heat or you can burn the wax. So you'll see a lot of like pot doublers where it heats water in a pot and then that steam heats a pot above it that has the wax in it. That's, that's really popular as well. So Anyway, you, you can Google or look at other YouTube videos. There's multiple ways to reheat this wax. Just use whatever preferred method you have. But I really like this solar melter. I think it does a good job, especially on the first pass, uh, considering that the sun is free and you don't have to pay for the electricity or anything else to heat your wax. And it does a good job separating the wax from the honey. So when you initially pull it out of this pan, depending on how much honey was in your wax cappings, you'll have a layer of honey on the bottom here. Now, because that is heated well above 110, 115 degrees, I generally dispose of it. Now, if you accidentally throw it out in the yard, especially this time of year, you know, we're in July here in Kentucky, you will set uh, off a frenzy of bees because we are officially in a dearth here. Ask me how I know. So you'll end up with hundreds, if not thousands of bees around your house on the patio finding that honey. I don't particularly want that honey going back into the hive or inevitably back into my honey bottles that I sell because that honey is essentially just sugar at that point. I guess, I don't know, somebody who's an expert on this can tell me better, but if the honey, if the bees were to take that honey again, ingest it into their honey stomachs, are they going to reintroduce the beneficial enzymes to that honey? And then it's all is going to be well. I just, I like to be able to say that my honey is 100% unprocessed. It's not heat treated or anything. And this just seems to be, uh, you know, possibility that that's not the case. So I generally just dispose of that little bit of honey. Now, dep again, depending on how much honey is in your cappings, that can be a lot of honey. And it's fine to consume, it's just more or less just table sugar at that point because you've really kind of cooked off all the beneficial enzymes that were in there. I also want to say that this is not a paid endorsement. I bought this Lyson, Lyson solar melter with my own money, so I just want to make sure that that's very clear for the audience that I was not paid to endorse this product. I think it is a very good product. It has a couple of shortcomings, 
um, that I would like to see maybe some improvements on. I would like to see a better screening mechanism than this, which is why I use the paper towel medium. They did give you an extra one of these, but these end up being somewhat disposable as you're trying to get the wax out. Sometimes they can just, uh, you know, it's kind of flimsy metal here. They can end up breaking away, but honestly, I'm not sure what else you could use better because this gets so hot in here, it does have to be made of metal. Otherwise, another product would probably just melt. So again, overall, I'm very happy with the solar wax melter, and I would recommend it to those that want to give solar melting a try. I've seen some DIYs out there and it just like, it just looks to me like the juice ain't worth the squeeze. Like you can end up spending money making your own. It doesn't seem to be as effective in my opinion from, from some videos that I've seen. And this one seems to check all the boxes. So I really like it and it's relatively affordable. It's not going to break the bank. So I think it is a good product and I would recommend it. So I appreciate y'all watching this video. I'll post another video soon where I break this down again. I melt it again, re-render it. And then I have some molds that I end up pouring this into because obviously you just don't want a giant block of wax. It's not very usable that way. So I'll show you those molds in a future video if you guys want to check that out. But thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys checking out this video.